And just trying to understand Vladimir Putin's intentions, let alone what's going on inside of his head, particularly since he's shielded from the outside world and he's reliant on a small group of trusted advisors. It would be just the holy grail for any intelligence officer or group to understand what's happening. But for now, it really is a combination of history, intelligence, and a guessing game of sorts when it comes to trying to predict Putin's goals, capabilities, and his future. That's why we bring in the insiders for talks like these. Army Colonel Chris Costa spent three decades in intelligence for special operations and was senior director for counterterrorism at the National Security Council. And he also knows Daryl Blocker, who is the former deputy director of the CIA's Counterterrorism Center and also an ABC News national security analyst. So glad to have you both. You're helping me way through uh, all these conversations on a daily basis. Chris, let's start with you. Putin is clearly waging a war of choice here. This isn't about the liberation of Ukraine. This is about Vladimir Putin. So doesn't that make him vulnerable to a coup? I mean, just look what happened to Slobodan Milosevic. Uh, it does indeed, and that's exactly the right example. Milosevic was a war criminal. He violated laws of armed conflict and uh, executed genocide on the ground in Bosnia-Herzegovina. He oversaw genocide in, in Kosovo. The bottom line is he waged indiscriminate war against civilians. However you define it, we'll let lawyers define it, it is a problem and uh, he is extremely vulnerable, he being Putin. He is vulnerable to going the way of Milosevic, to go to some criminal tribunal someday. He's also vulnerable inside, on the ground in Moscow, wherever he's hiding in some bunker. He is vulnerable to his general officers being extremely upset with the way Putin is waging war right now. You, the historical examples go on and on. We could talk about the czar as well, but I think I'll leave it there. Your point was right on the mark. So, Daryl, taking all that in, we are even seeing more Russian troops question this invasion, question their leader, sabotaging their tanks, um, confusing conversations on the radio. Could Putin be burying himself here? And, and what could that look like? Um, definitely. When your people aren't behind you, whether it's your military or security service, that's a huge problem. But when your people are coming out in the streets and protesting uh, a, a campaign that, quite frankly, they were not prepared for and don't understand, that is going to have more pressure on him than the military and security services because he controls them, but he does not control the populace. So... All right, I know both of you are not psychiatrists. I'm just going to lay it out there, okay? But you are intel guys, and you have had to put together profiles. You've had to study the minds of people like a Vladimir Putin. So to your best knowledge, what you know, your backgrounds, Daryl, I'll start with you, the mental state of Vladimir Putin. I mean, the word has been unhinged. Do you see him losing it? I see him as being very calculating, and my background is in psychology, and I was a human officer, so connecting with and assessing other individuals is what I did on a, on a daily basis. I don't think he's unhinged. I do think the last two years, the impact on, on mental health across the globe, uh, Putin isn't, you know, immune to that. So the same uh, sense of isolation that he, everyone has felt over the last year, uh, two years because of COVID has definitely changed a lot of people, including Putin. But he has already stated many times over what his intentions are, and we just need to listen more carefully. And if the world had risen up in this same way when he went into Georgia, when he went into T Chechnya, when he went into Donbass and Crimea the first time, we might not be in this situation now. Daryl, I can now add psychologist uh, to your bio. That was something I just learned. All right, I'll take it over to Chris, who's been my psychologist uh, many a times when I've been trying to be figure out conversations like this. Chris, I, I want you to weigh in just the mental state of Vladimir Putin, your background, your understanding. What are you observing? So as a human an intelligence officer, not with a psychological background, uh, but I will add that uh, I think that Putin has evolved over time. I used the term the other day uh, in a 
this is a liberal use of the term, radicalizing over time. He has changed before our very eyes. He's still the quintessential gray man, but he's demonstrating an impatience. In impatience, he's been isolated. He is anxious. So what we're seeing is so far, I would not use the term, and I've, I've listened to others talk about him being unhinged, et cetera. I think in his mind, through his worldview, he is a rational actor under pressure. So I will rely on the intelligence community. I won't see their intelligence. I won't see what uh, the psychologists are saying. But I think from my point of view, this is logical in the worldview of uh, Vladimir Putin. And it's an evolution over time. But we are seeing an impatient, a very different Putin. But that does not mean that he has some kind of psychosis necessarily. So, Chris, how could the West enable more resistance from intel to arms? So I think that's a really important question, and I would footstomp here. The United States has capabilities. It's an exquisite capability. It's unconventional warfare. Now, not to frighten people with that term, because it's an indirect form of warfare. It means enabling opposition movements without boots on the ground, necessarily. It can be done from another country, ensuring that, that we provide arms. We identify the appropriate leaders that we can work with and get them the appropriate equipment. In some cases, get them intelligence. In turn, the Ukrainians would provide intelligence back to uh, Western special operators on the ground elsewhere. We can do unconventional warfare. And I should note that I applauded when I saw the interim national security guidance from the Biden administration because they explicitly used that term of art, unconventional warfare. And it is designed for exactly the scenario that we're seeing play out. And again, it doesn't mean boots on the ground. It means enabling the right individuals on the ground in the Ukraine to oppose Russian forces, Putin's forces that are conducting, you know, essentially an illegal war of choice. Final question, Daryl, you have talked about the groundswell, civilians rising up, Russians questioning this invasion. What more do you think the West can do to help put an end to this? Honestly, I believe patience. Um, the groundswell and uh, grassroots revolutions, whether it was the civil rights all the way to the Orange Revolution in, in Eastern Europe, all took time to coalesce, all took time to become effective. And I know that doesn't speak to the folks who are trying to flee, but six days in, we can't expect to be able to turn this person who has made this decision long ago. but. Let's just watch the grassroots, the sports, the different communities, uh, corporate America. He is, everyone seems to be against him right now. Gentlemen, you're my dream team for this kind of conversation. Chris Costa, Daryl Blocker, hope I can bring you back real soon, talk on a regular basis. I appreciate you both and your expertise. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.